that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. We pray that you will click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. Our scripture will come from Psalm 9, 1 through 2. Psalm 9, 1 through 2. And it reads, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. I will be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. It was last November 2019 when I was diagnosed as having breast cancer. I remember finding out the week right before our 15th appreciation service. And I was wondering how I was gonna make it through the week and make it through the service without crying. Somehow the Lord carried me through the week and carried me through the service with few people knowing what I was going through. And now, here it is exactly one year later. God has been good to me. God has been good to me. The Lord saw fit to allow me another opportunity to witness the appreciation service from the New Beginning Church. And I am so glad about that. The Lord has also allowed me to still have my mother with me, who celebrated her 82nd birthday on yesterday. Special thanks to Ashi and Rachel for setting up a Zoom virtual call with our mom that was just so wonderful. It's just a blessing to still be alive after so many people have lost their lives to COVID-19. No, we're not still alive because we've been so good. We're not still alive because we've done everything right. We are only here because of the grace of God. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, we don't know where we would be. God has allowed us to make it this far in 2020 because we know that this year has brought a lot of challenging, challenging times to a lot of people. And we give God the glory and the praise if it had not been for the Lord. Yeah.
Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity to come before you. Lord, we thank you for another privilege to come to celebrate Jesus and what he has done for us. We thank you for, again, giving us life, giving us health, and giving us strength. We thank you for the many blessings you have thrown upon our church, our visitors, and our supporters. We thank you for this moment, Father God, that we've come to you to give you praise, to give you glory, to give you honor. We thank you, Father, for we realize it's a privilege. It's a privilege that we didn't have to have, but you granted it to us. It's an honor, Father God, for we glorify you and we worship you one more time, Father. Lord, we praise you just this moment, Father God, for all that you have done for all that you are doing and for what you will do. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless your word. Bless your word, Father God, that it will fall on good soil. Bless your word, Father God, that men will fall out with their evil ways. Bless your word, Father God, that your word will go forth. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Thank you. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you so much for joining us again here. At the New Beginning Church, we thank you for being a part of our service, and we thank you for just coming to be with us. Hallelujah. God has given us another chance. <laughs> He's given us another privilege. He's given us another honor just to come before his presence. He has given us. He's given us another chance. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Everybody didn't get this opportunity this morning, but God has thought enough to give us another privilege to come before him, another chance to be honored on the land of the dying, headed for the land of the living. If you're not saved, you're on the land of the living. But if you're born again, you're on the land of the dying, headed for the land of the living. Hallelujah to the land. Let me call your attention to Matthew chapter 24 again. Matthew chapter 24. We'll be looking at verses 32 through 35. Matthew 24. 32 through 35. Hallelujah. We're going to look at this pericope. Jesus is still talking about the end times. He's still talking about this tribulation period. Jesus is still warning us. Matthew is recording Jesus' words. And Jesus is still warning us that there's a time that exists. And that time is here. And worse times are coming. He's still warning us. He's he warned us on last week and the previous weeks. He said to us that perilous times are coming. These times will come where, where situations will not be what we want them to be. We know today that situations are not what we would want them to be. But he's saying to us today, if we're not born again, things are going to get worse. Things are going to get worse. As Matthew chapter 24, verses 32 through 35, Matthew Chapter 24, verses 32 through 35. When you found it, you will discover these words. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. The New King James Version. Uh, Matthew 24, 32 through 35. You will discover these words. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branches have already become tender and put forth leaves you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. I want to talk about Jesus' words that will not pass away. Jesus' words that will not pass away. For those of you who have been following this series, you understand by now that these things that we are talking about are futuristic things. These things are things that are yet to come. But the warning is ever before us today. And the warning is we must be, we have to be, 
We got to be born again. We must be born of the Spirit of God. We must trust the story that Jesus died over 2,000 years ago. We must trust this story to get us from earth to glory. We must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he voluntarily gave his life as a ransom for you and for me. He laid down his life on a skull hill called Calvary. He died, really died between two thieves. Jesus the Christ hung at midday in darkness showed up. It became midnight at midday. Jesus Christ died between two thieves. They killed him. Mean men nailed him tight to the cross. Mean men ribbed his feet and nailed his hands. Mean men, mean men lifted him up. Even after Jesus says, "In I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Mean men killed Jesus Christ that day. They took him off the cross, laid him in a borrowed tomb. But early that third day morning, early on a Sunday morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. You have to believe the story that Jesus died for you. Jesus died for me. He gives us an opportunity to leave these mundane shores and find ourselves in heaven. When Jesus penned these words, Matthew penned these words, and Jesus spoke these words, there's a warning before us. In the first pericope, verses 1 through 3, he deals with the fact that sorrows will come, and these are the beginning of sorrows. When you will see signs of this age yet to come. He moves to this great tribulation that will be coming before us, rather be coming before some, not before us who are saved, because remember now, these recordings take place after the church has been raptured up and gone on to be with the Lord. Jesus reminds them that the tribulation will take place. He reminds them in verses number 4 through 14, he reminds them that there will come a time when there will be wars and rumors of wars. There will be false Christs and false prophets that will declare that they are Christ. There will be earthquakes in diverse places, in many places, but the end is not yet. He reminds us, he reminds us that nations will be against nation, will rise up against nation. He reminds us that kingdoms will be against kingdoms. He also tells us that there will be famine. There will be famine in the land where you can't get enough food. He further reminds us that there will be sorrows, and these are the beginning of sorrows. There will be pestilence. There will be earthquakes. Let me tell you, this world will be out of control. I want to tell you today, the world is already out of control. Man is out of control. Nature is out of control. On one coast, we have fires burning out of control. On the other coast, we have earthquakes out of control. We have landslides out of control. These are just birth pains of what is yet to come. He moves to verse number 14, and he says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, he says, the gospel of the world must be preached throughout the whole world before the end will come. It, it tells us, it reminds us, it, it, be, it, it beseeches us, it tells us that preachers all over this world must deliver the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. It reminds every Christian that you need to make sure that you're about the Lord's business of telling men, women, boys, and girls to come to Jesus, yes. the Christ. Right. He goes further and he reminds us from verse 15 down to verse 26. He reminds us 
again, that there will be some false prophets. You will know if a prophet is a true prophet based on the fact that what he prophesies become true. Yeah, many, many, many all over this world has prophesied that the present president, number 45, will be the next president of the United States of America. Wow. One false prophet came on the other day and declared that, well, I'm not a false prophet, but I misprophesied. I, I spoke too soon. Well, if you prophesy and your prophecy does not come true, then certainly you are a false prophet. He says in verses 23 through 26 that false prophets will show up, false Christs will show up, and when these false prophets and false Christs will show up, they will be able to do great exploits. They will do miracles. They will show great power, and they will show great signs. He says, don't you believe them? He says that there will, there will come some will say, look, He's in the room. There will come some, some that will say, look, he's in the desert, but you don't believe it. He talks to us today about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And he says, these rumors from the false prophets will be like lightning. And he clarifies them as vultures that will come up to eat upon the dead. He moves and he says, because these false prophets will prophesy and their prophecy will not come true, there where the caucus is, there will also be buzzards. Mm. Moves in verse number 29 and he says, immediately after these things, immediately after the tribulation of those days, then the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give out. It's light. He says the heavens will give up the stars. They will fall from the silvery sockets and the earth and the heavens and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, all that we see before us today are just birth pains. It is just mm -hmm. pains right before things happen. What we think that is terrible today, what we think that is awful today is nothing to be compared to what is yet to come. Yes. Let me just share with you today, the virus has taken over 230 some thousand lives and it is still running rampant throughout the world. But this text declares it is nothing compared to what is yet to come. Yes. Let me tell you, we have people falling falling head over heels for false prophets today. They are walking and obeying false prophets today, and they are making sure that they do what false prophets and false Christ, Christ are saying to do. Many have even come to the conclusion, if 50 minus 5 would tell us to wear masks, then we will wear masks. Let me tell you, those who are the Antichrist, those who are false prophets, are coming on the scene, and people are following them even in the midst of folly. It reminds us, as we celebrate 16 years of ministry at the New Beginning Church, we celebrate 16 years of preaching the Word of God. It reminds us that we must keep preaching the unadulterated Word of God. It reminds us, it reminds us that we can't give in to the left or can't give in to the right, but we must stay with the word. We got to stick to the book. And if we stick to the book, then we will stick to the word of God. If we stay with the book, then the word of God will show us what we need to know. Amen. The problem with many, many have said that God will tell you something that's not written in the book. Let me just share with you. You ought to be able to search the book and find everything for an answer in your life. You ought to have the ability to look through the book and find every answer that you're trying to pursue. Because if you fall out with the book, if you don't follow the book, if you're not led by the book, you're led by the devil himself. He says that there will come a day with the son, the son of man will be coming in the clouds from heaven with great power and great glory. I reminded you last week that when Jesus Christ come with great power and great glory, he's not coming as Mary little baby laying in a manger anymore. 
He's coming to judge this world. He's coming to judge the actions of those who have not received Jesus Christ. He says that this, this tribulation would be so bad, it would be so bad till the very elect would be taken out. So God shortened that time so the very elect would not be taken, would not be taken out. This elect that he talks about in Matthew chapter 24, it, he, he's simply saying those that will receive Jesus Christ after the church has been raptured. I want to tell you, you don't want to stay around here for this happening. You don't want to be around here when Matthew 24 takes place. You want to be out of here in the rapture of Jesus the Christ. Yeah, it says in Revelation uh, chapter 9 that, that there will be a great star that will fall to earth and it will create a, a big cavity in the ground. And out of that cavity, there will be locusts that's built like horses and, and they will have the tail of a locust. They will have a body of great horses and they will run around and sting man for five whole months. They won't hurt the vegetation of the earth. They will only hurt mankind. It will sting man so badly for five full months until they will want to die and they cannot die. It goes on to say in Revelation chapter 9, death will be on the run. In other words, death will be running from mankind. We, we make our way to the hospital. We make our way to the doctors. We make our way to the clinic so we will not die. But during those days, men will want to die. Because the pain and the trauma will be so severe, they would desire to die, but they cannot die because death will be on the run. Death will flee from them. Death will be on the run. Then he picks up in verse number 32. He says, now learn this parable of the fig tree. Many theologians believe that the fig tree is referring to Israel. Many believe that the parable of the fig tree refers to Israel, and throughout the Bible, countries and nations are identified with certain trees. He says, now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branches are ready and become tender and it put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. All these things I just listed to you and many other things that I have not listed to you, you know when summer is near. You know when the fig trees begin to give off the leaves from its branches. You know when the fig trees begin to give tender leaves from its branches. You know that summer is near. Parallels this summertime. He parallels the, the blooming and the blossoming of the fig tree. He, he parallels this to the coming of these last days. He says, so also, when you see all these things, what things? All these things that I've taken my time to list for you. When you see all these things, know that it is near and it is at the doors. <laughs> it is at the door. It is so close until it's at the door. Let me just tell you today, my beloved, there is nothing that has to happen in history or anything in the future for Jesus to come back. Everything that needs to happen has already happened. Jesus can crack the sky while I'm standing. Jesus can crack the sky while we're sleeping. Jesus can crack the sky and call all of the soldiers in this army for the Lord. He can call us home. Yes. Yeah, we have, we have a parable. We have a parallel to our national government. Our national government declares war on another country, but before the national government declares war on another country, the president says it is a possibility that we're going to declare war in 72 hours. Mm -hmm. He says there's a possibility that we're going to declare war in 48 hours. What he's doing is he's giving Americans enough time to come on home. What he's doing, he's sending out a warning. He's saying to us, you need to come on home. You need to leave that place because I'm going to bomb the place in a matter of 72 hours. I'm going to bomb the place in a matter of 48 hours. I'm going to bomb the place in a matter of 24 hours. It gives Americans, it gives the, the people of America opportunity to come on home and escape the great danger that is coming around the corner. 
What he's saying is he gives us an opportunity. He gives us an opportunity to leave that place and to come on home to this place. That's what he's doing here in the book. In the book, in the book what he's doing is he's warning us. He's giving us a sign. He, he's giving us a sign. You see, the people of the Bible always look for signs. Jesus is saying they're going to have the sign, and the sign will be all these terrible things that will take place in the tribulation, and you will know that it is near. And let me tell you, after the Americans have time to come on home, then the president pushes the button. He gives the order to bomb the place. He gives the order to take the entire country out. He gives the order to set the place on fire because Americans have had time to come on out of the place. That's how it is in the rapture, I tell you. In the rapture, God is constantly giving us warning that the rapture is coming. He's constantly telling us that these things going to happen. He's saying, you need to be about God's business. You need to get to know him as your savior because I'm giving you time because I'm going to bring my saints on to the house. I'm going to bring them home. And after the church has been raptured up, God is going to bring us all to the house. Yes. After the rapture, then the tribulation will come. He says, you will know it. You will know it. You will know it. Just as the fig trees gives the way to his limbs, gives the way to the leaves, gives the way to the blossoms, then you know summer is near. I'm telling you today, Jesus is saying, just as all these things take place, you know that Jesus and the destruction of the earth is near. The end times are near. Matter of fact, it's at the door. It's at the gate. It's right outside. It's just a matter of time before God gives the word and this world, this world we know is destroyed. When we look at the text, verse 34 says, Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till these things take place. He says to us, he says to us today, Verily, assuredly, for sure, or back home, they would say, for sure, these things are going to take place. And this present generation will not be gone when this happens. This generation will not pass away. Let me just stop and tell you what generation. Certainly, he's not talking about the generation that he was talking to 2,000 years ago. He says this generation will pass will will not pass away. So certainly he's not talking to the group of people that he's talking to when he when at the time of this writing because that's been two thousand years ago and we don't know any man on planet Earth who's two thousand years old. So he's not talking about that generation. Neither is he talking about our generation of people who are saved. He's not talking about those of us who are born again. He's saying that this generation, the generation that will be left after the rapture, the generation that will not be caught up in the rapture, the generation that will not be called home, that generation will not pass away before these things happen. They will see these things happen right before their very eyes. They will see the wars. They will see the earthquake. And we are seeing a foreshadowing of those things now, but it's going to get worse. Jesus says that the generation that still is around here, after the church is raptured up and taken to heaven, after those who believe the story, that generation will not pass away until these things take place. In my final verse, verse number 35, Matthew chapter 24, verses 32 through 35. My final verse says this, heaven and earth, will pass away. Heaven and earth, as we know it, is going to pass away. Uh, Revelation chapter 21 says it like this, and there was no more sea. Heaven and earth passed away, and there was no more sea. We, and he says, behold, I see a new heaven and a new earth. I see a new heaven and a new earth. Don't get used to earth like it is now. Don't get used to hanging out. I know you like, I know you're living your best life. I know you're enjoying yourself, but don't get used to dying here. 
You need to wear, wear this, this world like a loose garment where you can take it off at any moment because Jesus is coming back. And when he come back, he's coming to get a church without a, a spot or a wrinkle. When Jesus come back, after he has raptured his church out of here, Jesus will come back and then heaven and earth will pass away. Don't get caught up in the lifestyle. Don't get caught up in what you like doing. Don't, don't get caught up with where you work. <laughs> don't get caught. We know, we know we can't get caught up with what we work, where we work because so many millions are laid off right now. So many millions are hungry right now. So many millions are being evicted right now. Don't get caught up in the stuff that's going on that you've gotten used to. Don't get caught up in it. Because heaven and earth will pass away. But, but is a, a contracting word. It's a, it's a connector. It, it is a connector that tells us what I just said is true. However, but is a word that says that I'm going in one direction, but I'm changing course and going in a different direction now. But is a word that lets us know that what I've said, I meant it. However, I'm about to say something. Therefore, I'm about to say something. I am about to say something that is different. Jesus gives us hope. And the man of God ought to always give us hope. The preacher ought to give us hope. The preacher ought to tell us as this virus is running crazy, we ought to have some hope. If we're going to have hope, it's going to come from the church. If we're going to have hope, it's going to come from the saints of God. If we're going to have hope, it's going to come from the man of God. If we're going to have hope, it's going to come from the preaching of the word of God. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Keep hope alive because Jesus offers hope. Jesus' words will by no means pass away. Jesus says, my words by no means pass will pass away. Jesus says you can bank on it. Jesus says I'm going to keep it 100 with you. Jesus says flat out. Jesus says my words, you can depend on it. The problem today, we're depending on too many other folk words. We're looking to CNN, listen at their words. We're looking at Fox News and we're listening at their words. We're looking at MSNBC. We're listening at their words. We're listening at SSNBC. We're listening at their words. We're listening to PBS. We're listening at their words. We're listening to NBC. We're listening at their words. We're listening to ABC. We're listening at their words. We're listening at MTV and listening at their words. We're even listening at Bounce and listening at their words. We're listening to CBS and listening to their words. I say to you today, Jesus' words are the words that will stand the rest of your life. Jesus' words will never step out of bounds. Jesus' words will never pass away. My words will by no, mean, no means pass away. That's why we have to spend, spend our days reading God's word. Spend our days praying over God's word. Spend our days operating through God's word. Spend our days praying in the midst of God's word, meditating on God's word, because God's word will never fade away, never pass away, never give out. His words are true, and we can't depend on the president's word, but we can depend on Jesus' word. We can't depend on our parents' words many times, but we can depend on Jesus' words. We can depend on his words. His, his words His words will never, never pass away. The good news today is we got to hold on to Jesus' words. Yes. Jesus' words says there's hope. <clears throat> Jesus' words says we can make it. Jesus' word says that we can go forward. And Jesus' word not only promised prosperity, it also promised tribulation. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be in the tribulation. Mm -hmm. You don't want any part of the tribulation. You can be born again today. You can be saved right now. And you can operate in the spirit of God from this day forward. You don't want to wait around here until this time come to pass. You want to be born again. You want to be saved. <clears throat> you want to get to know him as your personal Lord and Savior. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. You ought to come to Jesus before heaven and earth pass away. You need to come to Jesus before the rapture takes place. 
You need to come to Jesus before Jesus cracks the sky and the dead in Christ will rise first. You need to come to Jesus. You need to come to him before the great tribulation begins. You can, you can, you can avoid, you can prevent your going through the tribulation. You can be saved today. You need to get to know Jesus. If you're listening to me, the door of the church is open. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. You ought to get to know him. The door is open. The invitation is to get to know Jesus. And you can simply do that by inviting him into your life. By just saying, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me, me a new person. In Jesus' name we pray. Just those simple words. Will you, will you join me today and receive Jesus as your Savior? Just bow your head with me and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe that now you're born again. If you receive Jesus as your Savior, we, we believe that you won't be around here during this moment. We believe that you have, you're going to catch a flight and get out of here. And it is life flight. It is a flight for your life. We believe that Jesus will crack the sky. And if you received him today, you will get out of here, whether you're living or if you're dead, and you will forever be with the Lord. There may be some of you who are saved and know that you are, but for some reason or the other, you have not obeyed Jesus Christ. This is your moment of repentance. You can repent of your sin even right now by asking God to forgive me and call out what you have done and ask him to change your life and he will do it for you. If there are some of you who are in between church homes or you don't have a church home or you have not been attending virtually or in person, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus' words are standing, where Jesus' gospel is being preached, where Jesus is the center of attraction, where Jesus is the main source of our power. If you want to join the New Beginning Church, just inbox me, message me, and let me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church, we will be glad to welcome you to the family of faith. We've had several join during this COVID-19 period, and they've joined from this broadcast and many others. You can do that today. And if you just need prayer, inbox me, message me. Let me know that you need prayer, and uh, we will be glad to pray with you and pray for you. Because we believe that Jesus the Christ is the only one that can help us now. God has given us Jesus. God has given us the Holy Spirit. And God the Father is the only one who can help us now. This is your moment. You can get to know him all by, by yourself. You can get to know him for yourself. You can get to know Jesus the Christ and who he is and what he has already done. As we continue to pray and remember some in prayer, we want to make sure that we remember 
Michael Shelley, Pastor Floyd, Sister Benny Brown, the Jacksonville Health Care Facility, and a classmate of Lil Kevin, all of which are wrestling with COVID-19 and this virus. We want to lift them in prayer. We want to continue to pray for Sue, for Sister Woods, Sister Corey Woods, Sister Johnny Woods, and we want to pray for Grandma Briscoe. We want to lift them all in prayer. We want to continue to pray for Sister Ann Kendall and, and those others who have asked us to pray for them. We want to continue to lift them in prayer. We want to pray today for our 16th, thank you, our 16th appreciation where today we're looking forward to a drive-through, not a drive-by, but a drive-through. We're looking forward to, to celebrating our 16th appreciation for Sister Davis and myself of being in ministry at the, at the New Beginning Church. So please, ma'am, please, sir, join us at 4 p.m. today. They're going to line up at 3.30. Please join us at 3.30 for a 4 p.m. drive-through today. We're just so blessed of God that God has blessed and anointed and given us favor to participate in ministry as Jesus leads our ministry in the Lord. I'm going to ask Sister Davis to come around here and I want to appreciate her publicly for, <laughs> for the last 16 years of being a part, not just a part, but being an intricate part of the New Beginning Church for for being a blessing to us. Now, as she has said, and many of you know, uh, last year this time, a year and a couple of days, or three days or so ago, she was diagnosed with breast cancer, very uh, aggressive form of breast cancer, but God has seen fit. God has seen fit to keep her here, and, and she's appreciative. That's right. I'm appreciative, and the New Beginning <laughs> family is appreciative, and and I want to tell you that she's only missed church twice since that diagnosis, one full year. One day she missed it, she was actually in, in the hospital. The other day she missed it, she was trying to get along with the Lord and see what the <laughs> Lord is going to do. Amen. When it hits you like a brick, <laughs> when you hit me, when it hits you like a brick and you begin treatment, it, it, um, it knocks you down, drains your body. So those two times, one Wednesday and one Sunday, she has actually missed. And uh, I'm grateful for her support. I'm grateful for her determination. And many times she pushes me to the next level. And I want to say to her, thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being a part of uh, what we do here at the New Beginning Church. It is now offering time. It is time to, to give to the Lord through tithes offering and sacrificial gifts. We're lifting up Sister uh, Leela Anderson. We're list lifting up Sister Leela Anderson in prayer. We are lifting her in prayer also. It is offering time. It is offering time. And it's time to give to the Lord. I said it's time to give to the Lord. I hear you. I hear you clapping and shouting for this opportunity to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a privilege to give to the Lord. It is offering time. You can give in three different ways. Uh, one of those ways you can choose here today to give to the Lord. You can give by way of Cash App. Our cash tag is NBC Souls, dollar sign, NBC Souls, cash tag, NBC Souls. You can give by way of Cash App. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting. Dot Jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting dot Jesus at yahoo.com. The idea here is as we lift Jesus, he, draw all, he draws all men unto himself. The third way that you can give is through uh, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. 77459. We want to encourage you to give and we look forward to you giving. You do know just because we're not in the church building that we still need to give. 
We need to keep our commitment to the Lord. We want to make sure, especially in times like this, this is not a time not to give. This is a time to make sure that we give. And so please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to give by way of cash out, Zelle, or by P.O. Box. And we'll be glad to uh, celebrate with you as God continues to bless our lives. Again, thank you, those of you who are joining us for Sunday morning Sunday school. You who are not joining us, you can continue to join us and uh, begin to join us, rather, at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. We have the International Sunday School Standard that we go by. Please, ma'am, please, sir, join us for 9 a.m. every Sunday for Sunday school. Also, you've joined us today at 1045 a.m. for worship service every Sunday. We are, we are here every Sunday at 1045 worship service by way of Zoom as well as by way of Facebook Live. Also, you can join us on Wednesday night, Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. You can join us for Bible study. Continue to join us for Bible study where we actually walk through the Word. Right now, we're walking through Col Colossians chapter 3. So go ahead and read Colossians chapter 3 so you can be on target and we can share in the Word. And the light bulb can go off for you as we speak. Please, ma'am, please, sir, continue to join us. Also, our children and our youth, uh, they are having Sunday school by way of Kahoot. Kahoot is a challenging uh, uh, format that they use to challenge the children. And they are having the same Sunday school lesson as the adult, as the adults by way of Kahoot. So please continue to join us. And if you want your child in Sunday school, even if your child is not a member of the New Beginning Church, you want your child in Sunday school, please contact Sister Davis. She would do direct you to the right Sunday school class. We want to put the word of God in our children today because we put the word of God in them today. Then the Bible promises they will remember it and they will not stray. I know you said, but I put the word of God in minds and they still stray. The word of God in them is making them miserable <laughs> when they sin and when they get out on their own. So please contact Sister Davis for our youth and our children Sunday school class. And again, you don't have to be a member. We're trying to reach out during this time where we cannot meet in person. Please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, join us in Sunday school and join us in our giving. Also, I want to begin to give some kind of report uh, on uh, the COVID-19 virus here in Houston as well as, as Harris County. I want to thank Sister Jackie Jackson for, for keeping me abreast on, on what's going on with COVID-19. The CDC is still asking us to make sure we wear masks. Regardless of what many men may say or what any man says, wear your mask, keep socially distanced from each other, avoid large gatherings, avoid large gatherings. Uh, matter of fact, the CDC and Dr. Fauci it said to us that uh, you should not be even celebrating Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's with anybody other than the folk that already live in your house. Uh, uh, many children are not, uh, a, not uh, advised to even visit their parents. This will be the first year in the last 35 years that we are not going home to be with Mama and, and Mama uh, for Thanksgiving. So uh, I'm asking you to do that. I'm asking you to to avoid this virus so we can flatten the curve. So again, make sure you keep socially distanced, avoid uh, large crowds or avoid any crowds that's not in your household, uh, exercise washing of hands, make sure that you keep your mask on. Make sure you wear your mask, make sure you wear your mask. We're trying to avoid another shutdown here in the Houston area because the numbers are growing, the numbers are are multiplying. We've had record numbers this week like never before. Uh, we want to make sure that we uh, follow the advice of our mayor and, and as the advice of, of our county judge. And we want to make sure <clears throat> that we understand as of, of November 14th yesterday, there was 12,207 cases. 12,207 cases as of yesterday with 212 deaths in Harris County in one day. 212 deaths in Harris County alone in one day. Um, and then uh, today's count, uh, 847 new cases 
847 new cases. This is as of February of November 14th. 847 new cases. Um, the Texas Medical Center reports 140 new hospitalizations. 140 new hospitalizations as of uh, November 14th. And 92% uh, of the ICUs are to capacity. There are 92%. If that means if you have a person who is who is desperate for life or or, or need ICU beds, there's only 8% left. And we have to make sure that we flatten this curve, make sure we stay out of harm's way, and make sure that we use wisdom. I know the Lord will take care of you. I know the Lord will bless you. Do not put yourself in harm's way. Make sure you wear your mask. Make sure you wash your hands on a regular basis. I think I've washed my hands more in the last seven months than I have in the last 57 years. <laughs> I've washed my hands even when nobody else is in the house but me. I'm, I'm washing my hands. I've used more towels and, and more paper towels than ever before. Wash your hands. Keep your hands out your face. Make sure you do not, whatever you do, go get involved in large crowds. Make sure you avoid these crowds. Make sure you eat and spend time with people in your house. Zoom is a good way to celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas this year. It's a good way to celebrate. Get everybody, get Big Mama on Zoom and, and make sure y'all have a virtual celebration. We got to make sure that we be wise, be wise and and, and do the things that God is calling us to do. Again, thank you, Sister Jackie Jackson, for, for informing us and keeping, keeping us informed. We at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are, lift, as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to go through the tribulation. We thank you for the knowledge. We thank you for the encouragement. We thank you for blessing us, your grace and your mercy. We appreciate it. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us in our going. Bless us to stay safe. Bless us as we celebrate 16 years of appreciation. We ask you to bless every person. We ask you, Father God, to grant us more years and bless us, Father God, to be about your business. And, Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, and thank God. God bless you, and God keep you is our prayer. Thank you so much for being a part of our service on today, and we're looking forward to uh, you being a part of our service on Wednesday. God bless you, and God keep you.